we were going to talk about operations on real numbers. Now, I'm not going to touch your intelligence. I'm assuming you remember how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. What we're going to talk about are pieces of terminology. For instance, additive, inverse. Additive meaning addition, inverse meaning opposite. So if I want the additive inverse of 5, that means I'm going to take 5, and what am I going to add to it to make it cancel out, to make it equal 0? What's the opposite that will neutralize it? So the opposite of a positive 5 would be a negative 5. And if you add a positive 5 with a negative 5, that will equal 0. Now let's look at the next one. If I take a negative 3, what can I add to it to cancel it out, to zero it out, to neutralize it? If you said positive 3, you're right. So remember, in this particular instance, when we're talking about additive inverse, we are canceling. We are making it equal 0. Now, let's talk about multiplica multiplicative inverse. Same idea, however, instead of using addition, we are going to be using multiplication. I'm still talking about the opposite, which means I'm still talking about canceling. Now, when we're talking about multiplying, we are not talking about changing the sign of the number like we did in additive inverse. What we are talking about is finding the reciprocal of the number. So, if I took a look at the number 2, and I'm talking about a reciprocal, I need to, need to make 2 a fraction so I can write it as 2 over 1. Now, notice something. Reciprocal, if you remember, means you're going to flip a fraction over. So instead of having a over b, the reciprocal of it will be b over a. Do you notice that the sign didn't change? It's still positive on both. Well, when I take the reciprocal of 2 over 1, it's going to become 1 over 2. And when I multiply those together, it's going to equal a positive 1, which is exactly what I needed to do. I needed to equal a positive 1. That means it canceled itself out. Let's take a look at the next example, negative 5 thirds. The question is, what can I multiply to it that it cancels out? and I end up with a positive 1. Remember, they're asking us to actually find the reciprocal. Well, first off, the reciprocal is going to be negative. The second thing is I flip it over and I get 3 over 5. And when I multiply negative 5 over 3 by negative 3 over 5, they cancel out to a positive 1. How are you doing so far? You in agreement? Cool. Now, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about another piece of terminology called absolute value. Absolute value is, by definition, the distance a number is from zero on the number line. The notation are these straight lines. So, in the first example, I'm trying to find the absolute value of 3. If I take a look at this number line, I am looking for how far away now, it doesn't matter which direction I count. If I start from zero and count one, two, three spaces, or if I start at the three and count to the zero, I still count one, two, three spaces. Regardless of where I start and where I end, I'm still going to get three spaces. So my answer is going to be positive three. By the way, whenever you talk distance, distance is always a positive number in the real world. Let's look at the next example of the absolute value of negative 5. Now, again, if I take a look at the number line, it doesn't matter if I start the 0 and count to the negative 5 or go backwards. I'm still going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. Again, going the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. The absolute value of negative 5 is just 5. So regardless of the direction I count, I'm still going to get a positive 5 because distance is positive. Now, here's an example that throws some people off. I'm going to take the negative absolute value of negative 6. Now, here's something most people may not realize. 
the absolute value does appear on the order of operations. On the order of operations, absolute values act like parentheses, which means the first thing I am going to tackle when I am looking at this problem are the parentheses, which in this case is the absolute value. So again, I'm going to look at the number line. And do you need to look at a number line? No, you probably have it in your heads already. But let's just humor me. And when we look at the number line and we count from 0 to the negative 6, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces. And if I go the other direction, I still get 6. So the absolute value of negative 6 is just 6. And you're like, what about that little negative sign out in front? Well, this guy, we have to remember him. And we bring him down because he's like, hey, remember me, I'm still here, which means in this particular instance, the negative absolute value of negative 6 is negative 6 as your final answer. Now, here's an interesting question for you guys. How many of you thought, hey, I'm just going to take the two negatives and I am going to multiply them together because it, I get to do it when there's parentheses. Why can't I do it when there are these absolute value signs? Well, I need you to actually consider something. These absolute value signs, they act like a wall. And nothing gets through the wall. Absolutely nothing. They are strong. They are secure. Your sledgehammer is not going to break them. Which means you cannot take this negative sign and this negative sign and multiply them together. You can't do it. That's a no. No, 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 no. This does not equal the absolute value of 6. It does not, it does not, it does not. It never will. So be careful about that. Okay, so let's do some examples. I want to find the inverse. And in the first example, I want to find the inverse of 56. And they want me to actually find the additive inverse, which means from the previous page, I am going to have 56 as part of the answer. But since it's the additive inverse, this number is going to change signs. So the additive inverse is negative 56. And when I check it, checking it means I'm going to take the positive 56, add to it the negative 56, and it equals 0. There's my check. Now let's take a look at the next one. This one's an interesting one. They want the additive inverse of negative 1 minus x. All right, so maybe we should look at the check first. The check will say, I'm going to take negative 1 minus x, and I need to add something to it to make it equal 0. Well, here's the deal. You know as well as I do, I can't take a number and a variable and add them together, which means I have to look at them separately. So the question is, what can I add to this negative 1 to 0 it out? Hopefully you said positive 1. And the question is, what do I add to this negative x to zero it out? Hopefully you said a positive x. And when you do this and you look at the check, it does equal zero, which means your additive inverse will be a positive 1 plus x. How you doing? You okay so far? You with me? Wonderful. Now, let's look at the third problem, and in this case, they want the multiplicative inverse, which means they're actually looking for the reciprocal. Well, I need to write 3 as a fraction. And first off, we write it as 3 over 1. Secondly, remember, it does not change signs. So since this 3 is positive, the multiplicative inverse will remain positive. And the only thing that's really doing the switching are your numbers. So it's going to be a positive one-third, and if you look at the check, the check is going to tell you to take positive 3 over 1 and multiply it by positive 1 over 3, and they cancel out and equal 1, which is exactly what they were supposed to do. Now let's look at the fourth one. Again, it's asking me for the multiplicative inverse, and it means to find the reciprocal. So remember... The sign stays the same on the multiplicative inverse. It stays the same. The only thing that's moving is the numerator and the denominator switching places, which means in this case, I get a negative b over 2a. 
And when I look at the check, and I take negative 2a over b, and I multiply it by its multiplicative inverse, they're going to cancel out and give me a positive 1 as an answer. How you doing? You with me so far? Cool. Now, here is an interesting dilemma. It's like one of those debates. 2 over 0 versus 0 over 2. Some people go, well, the answer is 0 to both of them. And some people are like, no, the answer is only 0 for one of them, but they're not sure which one. So here's what we're going to take a look at. Both of them mean that this is a division problem. This little line separating the numerator and the denominator means division, which means on this 2 over 0, I'm going to have 2 divided by 0. And on the 0 over 2, it means 0 divided by 2. Now, we're going to take a look at that second problem first. 0 divided by 2. When you set up a long division, it's not the larger number that goes underneath. It's always the numerator that goes underneath. And your denominator is on the outside, which means for this particular problem, the second one over here, 0 being the numerator is underneath, 2 being the denominators on the outside. And now the question is, 2 goes into 0 how many times? Well, sometimes the better question is, what can I put on top that when I multiply by 2 will give me 0? Well, hopefully the answer was obvious to you. What can you multiply by 2 to get 0? Hopefully you said 0, because that's true. 0 times 2 is going to equal 0, which means when I look at this division problem of 0 divided by 2, I am going to get 0, which means when I take a look at this fraction of 0 divided by 2, I get the answer of 0. Cool. Now, let's take a look at the other one. Again, the numerator is on the inside, the denominator is on the outside, which means in this case, 2 is on the inside, 0 is on the outside. And the question you're asking is, what can you put on top that when you multiply by 0 will get you 2? Well, I don't know about you, but to me that's a crazy question. Because 0 times anything is still 0. I don't know how I'm going to get a 2. But to me, that's like a crazy question. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. 2 divided by 0 is giving me, is just basically a crazy, crazy question to me. So when I look at that, that tells me that 2 over 0 in mathematical terminology is called undefined. We can't use the word crazy. They don't like it. So... Undefined means you have a zero on the denominator. So remember that. How's that? Does that help you with the debate between 2 over 0 and 0 over 2? I hope so. Okay, so let's take a look at a story. And in this particular story, it says a rectangular box contains 183 cubic inches. If a similar box has the same length, but double the height and triple the width, how many cubic inches does this box contain? Notice, cubic inches means you're actually dealing with volume. The word cubic tells you it's volume. It tells you it's three dimensions, and that's important. Some people don't realize that that one word tells me I'm in three-dimensional space. And since I'm talking about a box, the volume of a box, the formula is length times width times height. And according to this problem, the length times width times height is equal to 183 cubic inches. But then notice what it says in the second sentence. If a similar box has the same length, but double the height and triple the width. So now my height is doubled. My width is tripled, which means that's a multiplication problem. 
which means if the right side is going to get multiplied by 2 and multiplied by 3, then the left side is also going to get multiplied by 2 and multiplied by 3. Does that make sense? Do you follow that? Okay, which means the right side actually has 6 times the length, width, and height, which means on the left side, I'm doing the same thing. I'm actually taking 183, and I'm actually going to multiply it by 6, which means the new box has 1,098 cubic inches in it. How you doing? Does that make sense? Cool. Let's take a look at another story. Now I've got a hose that's filling a rectangular swimming pool in two days. And they say, suppose that a similar swimming pool has the same average depth, but is eight times longer and three times wider. How long is it going to take to fill the swimming pool? Well, a swimming pool is nothing more than a box. I haven't seen too many circular swimming pools, and they're not talking jacuzzis, so we're going to think of a box. And they tell me that in two days' time, this box is going to be filled, which means length times width times depth. Depth is the same as height. So, I know it takes two days to fill the volume of this swimming pool. The second sentence says, suppose that a similar pool has the same average depth, but it's eight times longer and is three times wider, which means we're multiplying. So if I multiply the right side by eight and three, then I get to do the same to the left side, multiply it by eight and three, which means in actuality, I'm multiplying the right side by 24, which means I'm multiplying the left side by 24. Does this make sense? Which means in this particular case, it's going to take 48 days to fill the new pool. How you doing? Good so far? Cool. Okay, let's look at one more. An advertisement for computer states that it costs $209 down and $102.92 per month for 23 months. I think this is a computer back from the 70s or 80s because computers don't cost that much today. They want to estimate mentally the cost of the computer if it is purchased under these terms as well as finding the actual cost. So let's talk about the mental cost first. We know that it's $102.92 per month. Well, if I'm mentally figuring this, figuring this out, I'm going to say it's $100 a month. And since it's for 23 months, that means I'm just basically going to take $100 times 23 months, which is going to give me approximately $2,300 cost-wise. And now there's $200 down, which means to this $2,300, I'm going to add $200, because I estimated the $209 to be just $200, which means it's about $2,500 the estimated cost of this computer. Okay, and so I would choose option B in this case. Now, let's look at the actual cost. The actual cost, we're taking $102.92 per month for 23 months. Well, up above, that meant we were multiplying. Well, it means the same thing here. I am going to take $102.92 and I am going to multiply it by 23 months. So this gives me an exact total of $2,367.16. Hopefully you got the same. $209 down, which means to this I'm going to add $209. And when I compute the grand total, my cost, my actual cost, is $2,576.16. This is the actual cost. 
our mental calculation was pretty darn close, right? So hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, I would suggest looking at this video again. Have a good one.